Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tubby here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. In today's video, we are still in the middle of our deep dive, taking a closer look at everyone's favorite witch doctor, Nazabwa. We showed off his pure spider build in the last episode, but what you're going to see today is a variation of it. This is, in my opinion, the classic Nazebo. I have played more builds of this throughout my years in this game than anything else on this character, and it still holds up surprisingly well after all of these years. If you want to be a bit more durable than the normal spider build, this should be right up your alley. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Check out the Definitive Edition playlist for our deep dives in Heroes of the Storm down in the video description. And I'll see you all again really soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Warhead Junction today. The friendly team Nazebo, Tahaka, Greymane, Malganis, and Karazim. The enemy team Abathur, Varian, Jim Laner, Zul'jin, and Ana. At level one, we're going to take spiders yet again, although this build is going to be substantially different from the one we ran in our first Nazebo episode. We still need to complete this quest after spiders bite heroes a hundred times. Bronze Man MVP this match. Yeah, that's a lot of attack damage. After our spiders hit enemies 100 times, they get a big increase in damage and an increase in duration. It is still our focus to get as many stacks of minion kills as we can, although this could be a very difficult map to actually accomplish that on. Last episode, we were playing on Blackheart's Bay, which has very easy rotations in between lanes. This map, you know, not so much. Everyone's still fighting in the middle lane, so I'm just going to dump all of my mana into this, try to kill it as fast as I can, get stacks from all of these enemies. Now, remember, you don't need to land the killing blow. You just need to have your passive poison on a target when they die. Nice. Don't come coming. Spiders. That's a kill. Oh, he got an Abathur hat. Nice. Good job. Good job. Good job. If Nazebo is versus a Zul'jin, I imagine I just don't let him poke me too much. Like, we just keep the spiders flowing. All right, that's two lanes for me. Oh, my God. What's happening? <laughs> I'm so invested in my PvE world. Greymane going in on the enemy team's Ana. She lands her sleep dart and the anti-heal. Will it be enough to escape? Oh, I missed the fucking spiders, so it will. I missed the spiders on a target that was not moving. Luckily for me, Varian came in to give me my next stack real easy, and I'm going to head up to the top lane because that fight doesn't matter at all to me, but these minions I'm losing out on certainly do. Zul'jin coming down at the same time. Lucky he didn't cut me off. Good, we got credit for those. I'm going to grab my sippy cup here. Ping the Z Zul'jin is scary. And then we're going to grab Big Voodoo. Now, this might be the, like classic Nazebo setup. I was poking around Hero's profile and it doesn't seem like too many people are running this build these days. However, I still think it's very good and I hope that I could show you why throughout the course of this game. This is going to make it so we generate more health and mana from each of these minion takedowns that we get, meaning we become substantially tankier by the end of the game if everything goes well. We're at 30 stacks right now. Make that 32 as that minion wave dies. And now we're heading right back up to the top lane. This double soaking is the most important investment of my time that I can do. We're going to hit Varian from the fog with our spiders just to make sure they continue to deal damage. We're at 34 stacks on that quest right now. Nukes are coming up in the top lane right now, and the friendly team is about a level ahead of our enemies with a three kill lead at the moment. I'm gonna channel right side. Looks like Ana and Dingo moving up the left side here, so we are totally free. I am not going to join the fight. I'm immediately going to catch top wave. Try to get my stacks. We also want to nuke top or bottom. Middle's the worst lane to nuke because it doesn't have anything that pushes with it. I'm gonna secure my nuke just by dropping my zombie wall. Might get taunted out of it, damn it. Spiders, toads, and we're fine. Nothing to worry about, nothing to worry about. He can't kill me with taunt, there's no way. I mean, like, there is ways, but not from 100 to, 100 to zero. I mean, that's not gonna fucking happen. Tried to catch him in there, we'll drop that wall to let Maddie out. I have 15 seconds left on my sippy cup. I do kinda wanna nuke this, though. 
I mean, I did come up here for a reason. Spiders land one more time. Dingo's missing. He could be coming up through the fog and I would die. Uh, I'm just gonna wait on my sip. We can just stay up here too. Really not that big of a deal. We are gonna pick up Spirit of Eric here. This is going to make it so. R. Spite. What, what does this do? The number of core spiders decreases from three to four. Uh, does that make us complete our quest faster as well? I mean, more spi spiders auto attacking should, should mean that. Uh, I might just go soak middle. It's a pretty big wave. If he charges me, we can drop our zombie wall like immediately in front of us. And that would be a good catch for him. Like right here. I still think I'm fine. Still think I'm fine. That avatar top hat does change the dynamic quite a lot. To be fair. Missed that spider. That feels bad. We'll grab this and leave. We're at 61 stacks right now. By the time we hit level 20, we need to be at 175. I ran into an issue last game where we were too effective at pushing lanes. Like, actually, it was a problem. This game doesn't seem like it's going quite that way. One thing I want to point out about spiders as well is if you land them on minions and the minions instantly die, then you don't have to aim your skill shots on the follow-up targets. Like, you may have just been able to see there. I got damage onto Ana by killing a minion with a spider. Uh, I don't think I pointed that out in the last episode. So let's bring some attention to it. Our quest is completed. We're going to wall that guy and make sure that Varian doesn't rotate on me. Hello, oh, that's a lot of damage. We'll take that kill. Hit the minion wave, and then I am leaving. Heading back up top. Still have my nuke. Want to use it. Friendly team almost level 10 as well. If I take down these towers, that will do it. But my arch nemesis returns. Oh, he's fast. He's real fast. I think in this game, I might take Gargantuan. They have Sleep Dart. They have Charge that could silence me. Actually, they have Knockback that could silence me too. That sucks that I didn't catch that zombie wall. Yeah, I'm just gonna Gargantuan. Fuck it. If he wants to fight in the Gargantuan, I'll let him. Oh, not anymore though. Not with the Nazebo here. So Gargantua just kind of stands there and stomps. Well, what a lot of like pure pushing Nazebos do is they'll literally just walk up to a building, drop Gargantua and drop all their stuff and then walk away. Kind of like the Asmodan pushing style where there's really not too much you can do about it. If they just do that every minute, they will get the building. Maybe I could show off a little bit of that too. That's more of a toad strategy, but I think we can apply it for this situation. He's really protecting that building. A lot. Uh, I am rotating down. I saw Ana in mid lane, but I did not see where she went. So we can try to catch her here. I'm just kind of waiting for the sleep dart. All right. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> Here's him joining us here as well with the seven-sided strike. And I will finally fire off my nuke at this top building. I told you I would win. And this is kind of what I mean. If I drop Gargantuan here, uh, I don't have any fucking mana. I'm gonna die. Delete the VOD. No one needs to see this. No one needs to see it. Delete the VOD. All right, it's custom now that I chug my drink and try to make the shot into the recycle bin. Here we go. Chugged and made it nothing but net fucking awesome shot all right that kill that death didn't count that's what that means that's what that means <laughs> so this is 90 mana i saw it was gray i thought it was gray because i pressed it and i was out of range so a bit of a miscommunication there on my part but whatever we own those it's fine Anna once again rotating back up top does get jumped on by our gray main windrunner running in with those knockups as well she's asleep is it enough the seven-sided strike over the wall <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> hey, that's what I wanted to do. That's weird. We'll just drop everything right on the building. Uh, probably grab. You know, I was going to take ice block in this game. I don't know if I need it. We'll try it. 
maybe we can bait out some stuff. Ice block's obviously fantastic for like things like butcher charging at you or very predictable damage landing in one spot. For instance, the axe of Dingo, that, that would have swayed me in the other direction. We're going to wall right here to stop Varian from getting back to his friend. Hit him with all the damage we have, which is quite a fucking lot. And one more, there we go, take him down. Who's in the middle of that Dingo undying in the midst of our entire team? We have a two level lead right now, but the enemy team's catching up on talent tier very soon. I wanna grab next wave and shove it if I can. I do have a benefit that they have an Abathur on the map. So that's one less person that could potentially rotate around and fight me. So I'm trying to take advantage of that with slightly more aggressive pushes than what I would normally do. Uh, I'm probably getting pinged right now, but drop that, drop this, drop that, and leave. Uh, and leave, leave was the important part, thank you. <laughs> and we'll just get free damage in as we're walking away. Man, that adds up so fast too. Holy moly. All right, we are going to grab our sippy cup and then start to make our way down towards our team. Looks like most of them moving down to the bottom lane at the moment. Uh, I should be able to take this camp relatively easily especially with Zombie Wall taking a lot of the attention. Once again, Gargantuan used all of the time to tank camps for Nazebo as well, just to make this process a little bit easier. I'm standing so I can hit Toads on all targets. We're gonna Zombie Wall one more time to reduce damage. And that's not that bad at all. It did use up a fair bit of mana, but I don't hate that. Uh, do we see, yes, we see four members of the enemy team. So I'm once again, gonna be pretty aggressive with this top push. It needs to be fast though. We're gonna take Soul Harvest. What this is gonna do, it's an activatable ability. It's going to increase my spell power for the duration of this buff right here. Uh, with that increase, I could do things like drop my Gargantuan and his damage is increased throughout the duration. Enemy team is missing. I need to leave rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. But we drop that, we take the wall down, and that should be excellent. Enemy team already splitting off to respond to that push as well, which is opening us up for a perfect time to grab some nukes here. Look, Anna is defending the push up top. Oh my God, they must be getting desperate. Uh, we spider the wave just to get a couple more stacks. Our stacks are slowing down, we're at 105. Remember, the, the happy number at level 20 is 175. I'm falling a little bit short of that right now. Um, I am pretty confident that I can trade into Jimmy if he wants to trade into me. I'm going to get my spell power increase off the wave here. Just shove that. Jimmy heading up top, it looks like. Collection complete. I at least have three members of the enemy team above me, which is why I'm just going to rotate to my team here. I have nuke. I don't want to lose it. We'll just come hang out. Now, it is important that when we deal damage to these buildings, we make sure that it isn't going to just be healed up by the mule that Abathur has, which is kind of why I don't want to like go after the, the, the big building there with my Gargantuan until I get that wall down and I can really move in and do quite a lot. Here is the culprit now. The mule is here. We're just gonna drop Gargantuan on that, nuke this thing too, and this will be cleared. Okay, perfect. Let me go ahead, back up, grab this vision for our team. Everyone missing right now. There is an Amethyr top head up top. We see Varian emerging from middle on our tank. He's going immune to mitigate some of that damage. We're coming in slowly, but surely. Spiders are out, but fall too short. Uh, I'm just gonna drop a zombie wall, caught him. 37 seconds on Gargantuan. Um. He's gonna need a target. Perfect. Spite. What a shot. <laughs> uh, Varian being pulled into the building. Spiders land true and he gets taken down. We're gonna grab our sippy cup and potentially start to advance on these guys again. One thing we can do with our ice block is throw out all of our abilities because they last for a fair amount of time. And then ice block to wait for some cooldowns. Once again, great grab by our Dahaka. Is it gonna be enough to secure a kill here? If they move back into me, maybe? Like right now. Just mitigate a bit of that damage. Hopefully Gargantuan might be able to finish off Dingo. No, he does get out of range. The copy of Jim Laner does manage to do quite a lot of damage to our team too. 
but Jimmy did get taken down. We're at 132 right now. It's about 43 off from our ultimate goal. I'm still thinking about taking it anyway. I legitimately don't know what this talent does. Gargantuan stop area is increased by 25%. The slow amount increased by 50%. Reduces Gargantuan cooldown by 40 seconds and its mana cost by 50. Whoa, okay. Since we're a bit off on this, this would continue to enhance my split pushing capabilities by quite a lot. Reducing the cooldown by 40 seconds means it only has a fucking 30 second cooldown. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, well, I'll take that. Greymane does get taken down in the middle lane as our tank desperately tries to end the enemy healer and successfully does it. Humongoid is online and we're running it toward the middle lane right now. I'm just gonna use this. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop the cooldown. Boy, where are they? Where are they? Keep them there. Here, deal with this. Wow, look at that impact damage too. That is substantially increased. Now, it is worth mentioning that our Gargantuan will not leave the area that he is summoned in. So it's, it is, I didn't place him very well there. What I'm gonna do is grab this spell damage so I can use it moving into the next fight. Get that lane pushing. You know what I should have done? I should have just fucking flanked this guy. That would have been hilarious. All right, channeling. With wall down, he cannot interrupt me. I'm um, looking at top lane right now. Gargantuan is ready again. Uh, we have the enemy team pretty split as well. Varian back up in 35. Rainer a little less than that. So, damage. Uh, Dingo's beneath me. Uh, I'm gonna drop that. She already sleep darted, so she can't stop this. Throw everything I got at this, to be honest. Oh my god, he ran into that nuke! Dingo's doing dingo's. Hold on, spiders in the building, kill it. We push up, we push up. It hurts. Woo! We can dodge this, we're fine. <laughs> or, uh, that avatar really wanted to kill the Zemo there, huh? And what do you know, our Gargantuan is back off cooldown again. So I guess I zombie wall to take damage. Then I move up, use my active, and drop this bad boy right here, and he should be able to get this wall down on his own. I'm gonna back while he's doing that and just refill my health. Oh, yeah, this is kind of satisfying. I've always been a spirit fan. I've always, always been a spirit fan. Now, I can also press this button to make him stomp, but I also think he does it passively too. Friendly team is getting on the core right now. The shields are still holding, but there we go, dealing meaningful damage. It's gonna be 15 seconds before Dingo is back up and able to defend, but there's no way this core is gonna last that long. As I return, look what's ready. Oh my God. <laughs> that 20 upgrade is kind of fun. I've literally never taken that. That's pretty fun. I like that. Dahaka picks up the MVP with zero deaths. Do we make the board? Oh yes, I contributed so much. So much XP for the team. Talents we went for in today's video. Once again, I kind of call this the classic Nazebo. I usually take spirit with it, but this was such a fun game for Gargantuan. I'm glad that I went with it. Uh, we take Widowmakers at level one, big voodoo to increase our maximum health and mana. You will actually find that because of the mana increase, you don't go oom as often as you might think if you've been relying on the spider mana return. Having more maximum man mana really goes a long way. Into Spirit of Erakir, Gargantuan, Ice Block, which had basically no value this game, <laughs> but it was better than the alternative. Soul Harvest for that big spell power spike, and then that level 20 Gargantuan to not have a cooldown. That is so ridiculous. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. I'll see you again soon.